I'm here speaking on behalf of a group of researchers coming from Italy, Germany, France, and we are basically archaeologists and palynologists working together on this topic for the first time. So these are the very first results. Uh, usually I don't like reading, but please allow me to do that this time because the topic is really incredibly complex and dense, so for this time I prefer to, to read my text. So Sisi represents a crucial area in the Mediterranean basin for its uh, geographic position, ecological diversity, cultural heritage, and historical richness. We can say that we are in the center of central Mediterranean. Main aim of this paper is the review of the paleoenvironmental and paleoclimatic results from lake sediments and the evidences from prehistoric context, collecting archaeological, archaeological notably paleodemographic, and archaeobotanical data, pollen and plant macro-remains in Sicily Island. The chronological range will cover from the late Pleistocene until the first historical times. All these studies allow to put together the paleoecological information and compare them with cultural development of prehistoric human groups to verify how climatic oscillations can have affected prehistoric communities in settlement patterns, socio-economical chains, land use and other human activities. Sicily is the largest island of the Mediterranean basin and a key region for understanding of quaternary climates and environments. At the crossroad of the western and eastern parts of the Mediterranean, but also very close to the fourth north parallel. This peculiarity of Sicily is mainly due to the strong seasonality and the heterogeneity of its Mediterranean climate, which varies locally according to altitude and exposure to the sun. 23 vegetational bioclimatic <coughs> assemblages were identified and 250 biotopes and biotope complexes of fauna and vegetation. So archaeological data are, are the results of regional territorial research and local excavation on the island developed through the use of modern research strategies along the 20th and 21st century. For what concerns the Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic, the majority of archaeological investigations are focused on western and southern Sicily. Caves of the area of, of Agrigento, southern Sicily, are representative of the earliest Neolithic phases, while eastern Sicily is representative for the whole Neolithic period. Copperage sites are well known for the earliest phase in the southwestern parts of the island and from some caves of the area of southeast and northeast Sicily. The latest past part of Copper Age and Early Bronze Age has been recently object of several studies in central Sicily. Studies on Early and Middle Bronze Age are quite developed all over the island and on the small islands. Late Bronze Age, apart from some sites in western Sicily, has drawn more attention in eastern Sicily. So let's talk about uh, archaeobotanical studies. We have uh, 18 sites on 30 sites so for prehistoric uh, remains, some more scattered for the classical and medieval phases. Prehistoric analysis are unfortunately centered only on some hot spots, such as Aeolian Islands and northeastern Sicily for the Bronze Age, western Sicily for the Iron Age, and a reliable stratigraphic sequence for me from Mesolithic until late Bronze Age for sites. Concerning plant <coughs> remains analysis, most part of the archaeobotanical resources come from isolated research on a site scale especially for Upper Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and the passage to Neolithic. Seven sites, both from Aeolian Islands and Sicily, with a scattered chronology, are known for the Early Bronze Age. For what concerns the Middle Bronze Age, charcoals and carpological remains from, from Aeolian Islands are known for these phases. So the Aeolian archaeobotanical dataset is the richest one, with a series of AMMS analysis conducted on selected plants in order to obtain the value of the 13 carbostable isotopes. Good and complete results have been obtained through lacustrine sediments analysis all over the island. In particular, we have in central and southern Sicily, Pergusa Lake, Biviere di Gela, Lago Preo, Lengorgo Basso, and northern Sicily with Durio, Catrocchi, and Nurio Pietra Giordano. These sequences were selected because they provide both local and regional trends, they belong to different ecological areas, and they have an appropriate amount of AMS states correlated to the sedimentary sequence. They are significant to the interpretation both of local and regional oscillations during the Holocene in relation to human occupation. Okay, so let's see and compare the data that we collected. Okay, so 
pollen diagrams here shown are a synthesis of the vegetation record and are here presented as a first selection to compare the available data with human dynamics. Limits of the phases shown on the left are tempered on the social cultural chronology and not on climatic phases. Basically, up right you see the sequences from northern Sicily, Fergusa is central Sicily, and the other three ones are from southern Sicily. During Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic, paleodemography is concentrated in north northwestern Sicily on the coasts and southeastern Sicily on the coast of river valleys. Few pollen sequences cover the Mesolithic phase. Pergusa 1 core provides uh, data showing a more humid climate for this period, while more seasonality is readable on the other side. Archaeobotanical record is still too lacking to elaborate any reliable reconstruction, even if it seems possible to say that Sicily shows some early signs of change in its subsistence practices. The domestication process is partially visible and associable to Western Mediterranean climatic trends at the beginning of the early Holocene. It is readable through the few data from the Mesolithic sites that stress a tendency to a major presence of Mediterranean xerophical taxa already in the 8th uh, millennium BC. Since the beginning of Neolithic, paleodemography is concentrated on the coast and eastern Sicily. Lacustrine sediments sequences show a dense evergreen all europea Quercus Taipilex forest with pistachio shrubland for the chronological phase corresponding to Neolithic in uh, western Sicily. In central Sicily, arboreal pollen concentration declines after the fifth, mill fifth millennium, and this has been interpreted as representing forest opening due to a general mid to late Holocene aridification trend. As available through archaeobotanical analysis, a more thermophobic vegetation is present, although northern sequences show that mountainous environment was still quite humid. Cereal and legumes variability seems quite high since the beginning of the Neolithic, and the absence of archaeobotanical analysis from late Neolithic sites does not allow to implement the data for this phase. Okay, so during the Copper Age, paleodemography increases in central Sicily and partially decreases on the coasts. Paleoenvironmental trends show, as a matter of fact, a shift towards drier environmental conditions from 3000 BC on, uh, as all the sequences southern of 4th North parallel. Sequences from southwestern Sicily show an afforestation process, a switch to evergreen forests in southeastern Sicily is recorded, and a remarkable decrease of deciduous oaks and increase in evergreen oaks and poache in central Sicily. So we have a lot of differences among the, the regions. In northern Sicily, increase of fagus show the persistence of humid conditions and higher elevations, although also a decrease of deciduous oaks and an augmentation of poache is recorded. Anthropological data are available for three sites in eastern Sicily for middle copper age, that record the presence of the Shidus taxa. Okay, so early middle Bronze Age. With the beginning of Bronze Age, paleodemography is spread everywhere on the island with some major areas in southern and eastern Sicily. Data from central southern Sicily show a global general trend to evergreen cover reduction since the middle of third millennium BC until the first centuries of the second millennium BC. An establishment of typical Mediterranean cover vegetation after the so-called 4.2 uh, 4 uh, BP events observed in many regions of the world probably affected also Sicily. In northern Sicily, presence of poache increases with a small decrease in fagus. This vegetational shift was accompanied by a loss of diversity and could reflect human impact at higher elevation when forests were still expanding in coastal Sicily. On the other hand, at mid second uh, millennium BC, both in southern and northern Sicily, the percentage of arboreal pollen has a, a slight increase as microcharcoals in Pergusa. This could be re read as a rising in biomass amount and a partial recovery of vegetation is detectable in northern Sicily. So this phenomenon could highlight a limited inverse climatic trend towards moister conditions at the end of the early Bronze Age. Local archaeobotanical data bring to light that a great, uh, uh, a great vari variability, especially visible also on pollen sequences. Remains of fruits and seeds shows that the primary early Bronze Age, thank you, economy was based on cereal cultivation, pulses, and collection of sp spontaneous plants. So, end of the Bronze Age, paleodemography degrees with a concentration only in some sites of western and eastern Sicily. The increase of oleaceae is probably favored by increased temperature and decreased precipitation. These processes might have allowed the spread of thermophilus and less moisture demanding taxa. 
Also in southwestern Sicily, an increase in Olea and Poache is registered. And archaeobotanical data, unfortunately, available for late Bronze Age are not, uh, are not very consistent. So what can we say? That are here discussed and presented with the change of seawater level of Lake Preol and Pervusa that you see on the right. In the periods around and right after the late glacial maximum, the geographical conditions of Sicily represent the most relevant and interesting aspect in an attempt to reconstruct the human groups and landscape dynamics. The first reli reliable stable occupation of the Alien is attributable to the end of the Paleolithic. An early establishment of Mediterranean vegetation through the lacustrine deposits of southwestern and southeastern Sicily is detectable since the Mesolithic. Low demographic density is probably linked to the late and not spread occupation of the island yet. Nearly thick economic system and the deep change of human environment relationship during the Holocene represent very discussed phenomena all over Europe and the Mediterranean area. The first phase of Neolithic in Western Sicily was more marked while human pressure decreased during the 15th, 5th millennium BC, as it visible by the settlements. The beginning of the diffusion of the anaculture phase could be related to a major impact on the environment due to the widespread of Neolithic agropastoral systems. Analyzing Neolithic sites distribution, only the growing human occupation at the end of the Neolithic could justify an impact on the pollen sequences, readable from some indicators together with an increase in moisture. <coughs> These conditions could have sustained the increase of settlements in northern Sicily at the end of this phase. Between the 4th and the beginning of the 3rd millennium BC, Copper Age, Sicily is involved in new change processes. A Neolithic eco economic system is deeply rooted, sometimes with a major tendency to pastoral activities. Pollen data from southeastern show some increased human influence, but the transition to a more open environment approximately corresponds to the transition between Copper and Bronze Age. So even if human influence could be more effective on the environment, the first half of the 4th millennium is probably not clearly detectable uh, on the environment. And the carpological data show an economic system that does not differ significantly from the previous phase. A decrease in lake levels starting from 3000 BC indicates a climate-driven trend towards aridification, at least partially justifying the occupation of the inner region. Bronze Age. The early Bronze Age represents the beginning of a co complex system of exchange in people, models and objects that brings towards socio-economical profound transformations. Since 1000 BC, there is clear evidence of uh, human influence and prehistoric populations start changing the landscape on a broad scale, especially in the most populated areas. Nevertheless, although these phases represent the moment of passage, sorry, and a massive impact on the territory for the cultures of the first phases of Castelluccio villages, these processes would only be partially induced by the human presence and mainly from climatic change and a general trend to aridification, the so-called crisis of uh, uh, around 2000 BC. So here in Sicily, it is the culmination of a longer process started centuries before and corresponds to one of the most culturally advanced phase in the prehistory of the islands. Of the islands, sorry. After a short increase of moisture during the Middle Bronze Age, between the end of the Bronze Age and the beginning of Iron Age, despite the decrease in the number of sites, human perturbation would definitely infer change in Sicilian environment, especially due to the contact with the peninsular and eastern societies that will take to the foundation of the Greek colonies. So last slide. This paper represents our first joint effort to put together and compare the great amount of data that needs further discussion and thoughts. Reading cultural features, socioeconomic change, and patterns of settlements of prehistoric communities through the lens of environmental factors can be extremely complex because of the dense variety of factors, especially considering the long range of time here considered and the new data collected and published in the last 20 years. Despite the influence of human activities throughout early and middle Holocene, anthropogenic indicators on Sicily vegetation become visible only starting from the Copper Age in some areas and more present, I would say, late Neolithic Copper, uh, beginning of Copper Age in some areas, and more present only with the spread of the early Bronze Age. On the other hand, human dynamics in Sicily were probably affected by climatic chains and this requires further elaboration. At the end of the Bronze Age, concurrent climate change and cultural dynamics have an impact on the insular environment. Nevertheless, most of the strongest signs of change on vegetation will take place only with the 9th, 8th century BC. 
Thanks.